Welcome, welcome, welcome to all of our family. Welcome to this holiday season that we're going to share together. We're doing it in a different kind of way in 2020, but I thank God for the chance to share together. So welcome to this great opportunity to share with you and to share with your family and friends. We miss you, we love you, and looking forward to next year having a greater time together. But for now, welcome to Chance to see members of this family and tell them hi all over again. I'm so happy that Santa's on his way Been waiting all year long for Christmas Day I feel alive when I look up to the sky Knowing I might see him on his sleigh Soon I will see lots of presents by the tree Think of all the joy that's on its way I dream of Santa's long white beard and reindeer flying through the air. I know it's almost time for Christmas Day. have been some really difficult and challenging years. It's in the course of this time period we've lost people that we love and hold dear. Some from the virus, some from other illnesses and sicknesses, and some of you have lost ones who you love who are close to you. Mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, cousins, aunts, uncles, even children. And for those who want you to know we're praying with you, that God will give you some strength and give you some peace. But we take this moment to honor them, to honor their lives. A point always has to come when we stop mourning our loss and start celebrating those lives. And we celebrate this day the lives of those we loved and cared for, those who have been hurt, those we've lost. If you're still hurting, still struggling, we want you to know we love you, we stand with you and stand by your side. May your pain empower you. May you remember their voice, their ideas, their lives, and those things that drew you closer to God. May you remember how their life was significant and important, and if it were not for them, they poured something to you, into you, that's caused you to remember them even right now. 
We pray God will bless you, give you strength, and give you the peace that only he can give, the peace that does pass all understanding. May God hold you in the palm of his hand and give you strength and give you peace. We love you. Be blessed. Hello there, my KT family and friends. Sister Octavia here. I pray that all of you are staying safe and healthy during this pandemic. I know it's been rough and they keep telling us that it's gonna get worse before it gets better. Well, let's just keep doing what we've been doing, trusting in God. We know that he has the last word and he has total control. We truly miss each and every one of your beautiful smiles here at the building. Please continue to stay safe though. Let's remember one another in prayer daily and know that this too shall pass. I want to wish each and every one of you a very happy holiday season, and I can't wait to see you in 2021. Peace and love. Hello, KT family. This is Dexter Smith, the youth minister and the praise and worship leader uh, to this great congregation. I just want to just start off by saying that I really love you and I miss you. And even though that we're going through this pandemic and we're not able to see each other on a regular basis like we normally, uh, I still want to let you know that God still sits on the throne and he still cares for you and he still cares for your soul. And just being uh, away from you uh, really draws me closer to you. And uh, I'm always uh, thinking of, of this time that we need to be in the mode of praising. Uh, the, in, in the 150th division of Psalms says, uh, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And so no matter what you're going through through this holiday season, uh, if you've been affected by death, sickness, or whatever it is that you've been going through, still find it in your, in your spirit, in your soul to give God praise through the midst of this pandemic. So I just simply want to say happy holidays to you. God bless you, and I can't wait to see you again. Night, holy night, all is come, all is bright, round young virgin, my Holy infant, so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly Silent night, holy night, shepherds quail at the side.
Hi, KT family. Season's greetings, wishing you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Love you. Stay safe. I love you so much. Stay safe. Be healthy. We love you guys. We miss you. Have a happy holiday, everyone. And remember to keep God first. We would like to wish our KT family Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas and a Happy, happy New Year. Year from the Harrises. And remember, he is the reason for the season. He being Jesus Christ, of course. Merry Christmas again. We love you guys. Happy, happy holidays, holidays from the Smith family. We love you. We love you. Happy holidays. We miss you, KT. We love you. Bye. Merry we, Christmas, Mom. We want to say Merry Christmas, me and my grandson, to the Kingsley Terrace, Church of Christ, my family. Hey, I miss y'all. But look, my grandson got something to say, too. Say it, Cameron. <laughs> say it. Hello, Hello KT, KT family. family. We're praying that you're staying in and staying safe. So... From, From the, the Collins family to your, your family, family. we, we wish, wish you a Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas and a Happy, Happy New Year. Year. Stay blessed. Hi, KT, hey, KT family. family. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. We love you and miss you guys. And can't wait till the church opens back up. And we hope you have a great holiday. Merry Christmas, KT family. We love you. Greetings, church family and everyone. May God bless us all with peace and love in our homes, in our city, in our nation, and yes, even in the whole world. Love and peace to all by Rory Johnson and Carla Terrain. Happy Holidays. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas and, and Happy, happy holidays, holidays from, from the, the Bells. bells. Hello, KT family. I love and miss you. Happy holidays to you and your family. May God bless in the new year. Love, Sister Green. Hey, KT family. KT fam, happy holidays. Merry Christmas. From our family to yours. Greetings, KT family. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. From the Robinson family to yours. Peace and love. It's a fake fireplace. I don't get any warmth from it. I get my warmth from my brothers and sisters at Keith and Terry Church of Christ. You have a beautiful Christmas. A blessed New Year. Happy Holidays. God bless you. Hey, KT family. We're out here in Gallenberg, Tennessee. You know, God's been so good to us this year. And even through this pandemic, we are able to still feel very blessed. So from our hot tub to yours, Merry Christmas from the Petersons. Happy Love holidays. You. Happy Love holidays. Hey everybody, it's Roger and Valencia LaShore. And we want to wish all of our KT family a Merry Christmas and a very prosperous New Year. We miss everyone and we can't wait to see you all again. Love you. Bye. Bye. Happy holidays from the Young family. We miss you. Happy holidays from, from the Sanders and Brown, Fletcher, Jones, William Lambert, family. Well, bless you, bless you from the Hubbard family to your family. We pray that God is blessing you, has kept you safe and protected. We're looking forward to the possibility of being back together again next year. But to our Kingsley Terrace family, we love you and keep you in our prayers. From our family to yours, have a safe and healthy holiday and happy new year. Be blessed. Hello, I'm Elder Dwayne Hines. Thank you for the way you have supported the church. We pray that the vaccine will allow us to meet in 2021. Until that time, stay safe, wear your mask, and have a happy holiday season. May God bless you. My wife and I would like to wish the Kingsley Terrace family a healthy, stress-free, productive, happy, and blessed holiday season. You are truly missed, and we can't wait until the whole congregation is joined together again and worship here at the building. May the grace of God and the sweet communion rest and abide with us until we meet again. Kingsley Terrace family, as we come to a close of this difficult year, 
I want to wish you all a happy holidays and convey how much I truly miss you and can't wait to the day that we come back together. Hey, Kingsley Terrace family. This is Brother Eric Harris. I come to wish Kingsley Terrace a season's greetings and happy Thanksgiving and Merry Christmas and all that good stuff. Uh, but I want to read a scripture to you. And this scripture touched me personally. Uh, it's coming from Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. And it says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not on thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Uh, the reason I brought this scripture is because 2020 has been a challenging year for so many of us. We lost loved ones, friends, families, neighbors, relatives, and, and we don't understand why this is happening, but we serve a God who knows everything. And the thing about this scripture particularly is we can't lean on our own understanding. We have to trust him. And the most important thing is no matter what you do, you've got to acknowledge God and he will direct your path. We just left, uh, we just came out of a holiday the world calls Thanksgiving. But in reality, Thanksgiving is every single day because we have to be thankful for the things that he allow us to have. And then we have to give those things to other people so they can see a reality in serving a true and a living God. We're getting ready to embark on a holiday that the world calls Christmas and the Christian should be celebrating Christmas every single day because you flip that over, that's Christ's mass and we should be serving Christ in a mass production with all the body. I want to encourage you guys and I know we've been through a whole lot, but I want to encourage you guys to stay firm, stay strong, acknowledge God in all your ways, and let him direct your path. With that being said, Merry Christmas and be safe. We love you. We thank you and be blessed. Hey, T family, how's everyone doing out there? Woo! I tell you, this has been some year, 2020. Ain't been nothing like it, and I so hope won't be no more like it. But, you know, for the children of the king, despite what their earthly troubles are, our heavenly father has us and holds us in the palm of his hand. And thank God for that, because all this mess down here, whoo, it's been a little bit more than some of us can stand. But KT family, I want you to know, is this year is about to close out and we're on the threshold of a, a new year which holds promise for a number of things that hopefully a vaccine that will shortly be available which will help tremendously but then again as we cross over into a new year remember who has brought you this far nobody but our heavenly father and once again we want to know that you're missed we miss you I know you miss us, but together we're going to cross over, just like the children there. We're going to cross over to the other side and where we will hopefully, well, not hopefully, we will be together again here in this building physically. But despite that, we're still together spiritually, y'all. And so once again, I want to wish all of you a happy New Year, a healthy New Year, a prosperous New Year, and certainly a spiritual advantage to a happy New Year. Once again, KT family, I love you, adore you, miss you. Looking forward to where we can be together once again. Everyone, be blessed. 20 years ago, the Lord blessed Kingsley Terrace Church with a dynamic new minister, Stanley Hubbard at a time of our great need. Since then, Brother Hubbard has never disappointed in any way. He has delivered God's word weekly in a clear and well-prepared fashion, taught numerous Bible classes, presided over countless weddings and funerals and programs. He's developed and mentored ministers in the Indianapolis area, as well as across the nation and around the world. Further, he has represented Kingsley Terrace and the Churches of Christ in an exemplary fashion at frequent conferences, lectureships, and counseling sessions. We've been truly blessed and must never forget. 
Please take this holiday season for 2020 as an opportunity to say thank you to God and our senior minister, Brother Stanley Hubbard, for efforts on our behalf. While the COVID-19 pandemic rages across the country, Kingsley Terrace leadership remains steadfastly focused and concerned about your well-being, both physically and spiritually. This Christmas program is an example of KT leadership's efforts to maintain both a connection and focus for God's people through these difficult times. Scripture reminds us that often, especially during difficult periods, we forget that God is in complete control and has purpose for each of life's twists and turns. We encourage each of you to hold on and hold out. Keep wearing those masks and practicing other safety measures till the end, knowing that the Lord will see us through. He always has. Be safe, be faithful, and be blessed. Well, praise the Lord. So good to see you and have you with us on this great holiday season opportunity to share together and come together. Of course, this is Brother Hubbard of the Kingsley Terrace Church of Christ. We are a church where God is glorified, saints are sanctified, and lives are changed. And we say that because God is glorified, identifies the emphasis and the purpose of all of life is to give God glory or to have good things said about God. So we are a church where good things are said about God because of the people of God. But we're also a church where saints are sanctified because sanctification is the goal and the plan of God. His objective in our lives is to sanctify us or make us people set apart for his purpose and for his reason. So we are people where God gets all the glory. Good things are said about God, doc say, because we are with him. Secondarily, a place where where we, with the, those who are in the family of God, the sanctified, the believers of people who come to a place in their life where they're seeking to become set aside and set apart only for God's purpose. And thirdly, we're a place where lives are changed for those who are not in the body of Christ, who come to the church, they have a chance to experience a transformative experience that makes them all over again for the purpose that God's allowed them to be here. So we welcome you and invite you to come and share with us in this holiday season in anticipation of us getting back together on early point of next year. To those who are part of our Kingsley Terrace family, we miss you. We miss you. We pray for you that God will keep you protected and secure. We stand by your side and by your family's side. We're praying for you, and we're praying the vaccine will rapidly get us all healthy again and have a chance to share together as the people of God together. So we thank God for you and we're praying for you. Be careful, be safe, and take good care of yourself. Even in this great season, don't get caught with the with the capitalistic ideas of spending all the money to impress somebody. Too many of us are spending money we don't have to impress people that we don't like to buy things that we don't want. And may you decide to be wise and not get in debt to make a point, but understand the gift you have is the relationship the Lord offers you. Amen, amen, and God bless you. But just a brief word with you on this great holiday season to amplify the idea of how the Father in heaven has put things together for all of us as his children to bless us and make us better and stronger. Be finding in your Bible, Ephesians, the third chapter. That's a text here I think will bless you and make you stronger and mightier for the purpose of God. The lesson we share with you is based on the idea inside this text that emphasizes that God is able. And because God is able, friend, you can be able to. Amen. God bless you. Let's read this text beginning in Ephesians 3, and verse number 14 from the New International Version. The writer says, Paul writes, for this reason, for this reason, I kneel before the Father, as the Father right there, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. We get our name from him. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith and pray that you be rooted and established in love may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know that this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Not to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we ask or think. To him 
who is according to all the power that worked within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Inside of this text, friend, there's a powerful few ideas I'll share with you. The first one is he establishes that we are a part of the kingdom of God, a part of the family of God. And because we're part of God's family, it's an amplification of our connections and bond with him. He loves us because he loves us. He gives his children good gifts. But notice in verse 20, he emphasized an idea. Now to him, now to him who is able. God is able. He is, uh, his omniscience means he knows all things. His omnipotent means there's nothing he cannot do. His omnipresence means he's everywhere at the same time. God is able. He was able to see you before you got up this morning. He was able to allow your family to even coexist at this time. He's been able to protect you and secure you in spite of the pandemic. He's been able to get you through difficult times inside your life. God is able. But now to him that is able to do exceedingly, God can do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or think. There is no limit with our God. There's nothing our God cannot do. And he's done great things. But it begs the question, if God is unlimited, he can do exceedingly. He can do abundantly. He can do above all I ask or think. Then why is it in the midst of all of that, I often feel so unable? Why would I feel like I can't achieve things when God does all things and he works through you and me to empower us to do great things? Where's the limitation coming from? Surely there's an answer to this dilemma that we have, that God is so powerful and so mighty. I am made as his image. He has no limitations. And yes, I feel limited. I can't get outside of the house. I got to wear a mask. I got all these dynamics to my, my health, my friends, my family. Why am I so unable if God is so able? Well, friend, the answer is found right here inside this text. Notice the words that he uses in the passage. He says, he can do exceedingly abundantly above all we ask it immeasurably more than you ask or imagine according to, according to the power of God is according to our level of surrender. You see, the dilemma is not that God is limited. The, the dilemma is that we are limited if we don't directly and fully connect with our Father. So he says inside of this passage that the idea of according to, according to suggests the idea of the amount of trust you put inside of God. For instance, if I were to suggest that uh, you, you're a multi-billionaire and, and you give me out of your riches. You're a billionaire, but you can give me $10 out of your riches. But if you're a billionaire and you give me money according to your riches, I'm guaranteed a few million. Well, friend, the text identifies the fact that God is our father. And as our father, he gives good gifts to his children. The first thing happens inside the passage, note if you will, how Paul writes it inside this text and emphasizes its connection with God. Verse 16, I pray that out of his glory, out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit inside your inner man. The struggle is once you become a part of the family of God, there has to be something inside you that connects with your father. He emphasized the idea of it's a strength that happens inside of your inner man, your inner man. Your inner man is the place where your conscience happens at. See, the moment you're added to the family of God, the, the God, the Holy Spirit works in conjunction with your conscience to sensitize your conscience. And in, in sensitizing your conscience, it changes how you reason. It changes how you logic. It changes what makes sense to you. It changes what bothers you. And the Holy Spirit works to create a situation inside of you that now you're bothered and you're, you're troubled when you don't function how God wants you to function. That's the first job of the Holy Spirit. It sensitizes your conscience and makes you more aware of the things that you're doing. Therefore, when you were cursed before, it didn't bother you. And now you're aware that you're making that bad decision. Even before, you stole and that didn't bother you, but now it bothers you that you steal. The point is the idea that once you surrender to God, he begins to sensitize your conscience and change you from the inside. 
And then he says, once that happens, that Christ may dwell inside you. The Holy Spirit works inside you to change you, and it gets you to a place where Christ can move inside and make himself at home. Once Christ is at home inside of you, he dwells inside you. He molds inside you. He makes you different than you were before you became a child of God. You think different. You act different. You function different. Your idea of faith is transformed. What bothers you has now changed. Now you're more concerned about what pleases your Father in heaven than what pleases you and other people. And now that has happened, you function more like Christ and thinking more like Christ. Now you're able to love like God loves. Now the folk who got on your last nerve, you're praying for them. Those who did you wrong, you're praying for them. Life gets crazy. Sickness comes into your life. Your money gets funny. It doesn't bother you now because now you're trusting the God of your salvation. You're a whole new kind of person now. Now you're thinking like God. You're operating like God. You're functioning like God. Only thing important to you right now is what's important to God. You are made as his image and you see yourself as his image. And every moment you're trying to be more like him. Every step along this path, you seek to become more and more like your father. Because you're like that now. You become filled with all the fullness of God the Father. Now you're fully transformed. Now you become a person who's no longer you. You don't think like you thought. You don't act like you acted. You don't function like you function. Everything is different inside your mind. You don't see the world like you did before. Now you look to see the unseen things. You're looking long term. How can I be a blessing? How can God mold me? How can I become something great? How can I become that person that God says, that's one of my kids right there? It's at that point, it's at that mindset, it's at that period that you can say that verse. Now that I've changed, now that I'm different, now I'm not bothered, now money doesn't bother me, now people don't trouble me, now sickness, pain, loss is painful, but I don't let go of God's hand because I'm trusting him even right now in the midst of my turmoil. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all, immeasurably above all, you could ask or think. Now you win. Friend, that's my challenge to you. Surrender. The more you surrender to the Lord, the stronger you're going to be, the less pressure you're going to feel, the less pain will disturb you. But your faith, your trust, your assurance and your confidence in our Father will put you to a place in a mindset where it's transformative for you. Now you can do things you never thought you could do. Now you can go through some hurt. You can experience some pain. You can have a holiday season that's different than all others because now you're trying to be more like your Father, which requires maybe some more time with solitude. Maybe it's a time of prayer right now. Maybe it's a time to realize that God's in control. And I trust him even for the holiday season that's out of whack. No gifts, just an opportunity to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you that I'm awake. Thank you that I'm alive. Thank you that nobody I know has died. If they did die, prayerfully they died in the Lord. But I can hold to God's unchanging hand even right now when days are rough. May God bless you, friend, with a wonderful holiday season. We pray that you take this message and realize that you're able there's some habits you had in 2020 that God should have shook out of you. You got to drop them. Some friendships you had in 2020 aren't good for you. You can change them. There's some opportunities that you passed up in 2020 because you didn't know early in the month, in the year, you wouldn't have another second opportunity to achieve those things. But God will open doors for you in 2021. My prayer for you, that you let them bless you and give you power and strength and might to achieve the things you never thought that you could do. Let's go to God together for a word of prayer. Okay, won't we? Father God, merciful Father, loving Father, you love us, you keep us, you protect us. Oh, how good you are to us. We're sorry. Sorry, Father, we failed you at some points in 2020. We apologize for not being the people that we should have been. We apologize for having the wrong attitude at times. Being angry about all the wrong things. Father God, we held some some grudges this year. We treated some folk badly this year. We mistakenly thought someone did us wrong who didn't. We have not moved forward and asked you for your forgiveness. We've not prayed enough, studied enough, 
served enough, or I've been committed enough. And at times, even some of us right now who are hearing this message still stand as enemies of yours. I ask you, Lord, to bless each one, to touch them, to give them strength, and give us peace. Thank you for this year, this holiday season. Whatever we have, thank you, Lord. We had experienced it. I pray for those who are sick, for those who had a loss this year. Give them strength, Father. Give them peace. And then we look at this moment, this very moment, as a chance right now to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, that you've allowed us to survive this far and possibly receive all that we need. So 2021 can be a year that we can glorify you and magnify your wonderful name all year. And we not forget this past struggle, the past pain, the losses and the hurts. May they make us better and greater for you. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace, your peace, your love, your kindness that blesses us. And may we take every moment to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise that you deserve. And now, in the name of the God who calms all waters, in the name of the God who calms every sea, in the name of the one who can speak a world into existence with just a word, it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. May God bless you. Thank you for tuning in and being with us on this day. I pray that this whole time together on this video is a blessing for you. See our family, see our friends, laugh and smile. And some of the folks that you see, give them a call up and say, hey, I saw your picture. I was thinking of you. You're looking great. Look like you gained some weight, lost some weight. God bless you. I just want to pray that you spend some time together celebrating our love for each other, our care for each other, and our thankfulness to our God. If you're not a part of the Kingsley Terrace family, contact us. We'll work with you the steps to become a part of this great family. God's going to bless you, make you powerful, and make you mighty, and make you great. Be blessed and hold to God's unchanging hand.